Hi, this is Dr. Josh Cooper, and this is the first video in a series on PowerPoint presentation creation. People ask me when they see my videos how I create the pictures, the images, the animations, and they wonder if I use other software, and it's actually all done in PowerPoint. I'm self-taught and by no means any expert, but I figured I would share the tips and tricks that I learned over the years in case you find them helpful to you. This video is going to be about drawing simple shapes uh, in particular, for example, drawing an EKG recording uh, because I have those on many of my presentations and the question is how do you get that to look so clean? Uh, here we are in the home view and here are the some of the drawing tools in this little menu and when people start to draw in PowerPoint they'll often use this freeform scribble function and if I left click on that and let's say I try to draw a QRS complex in T-Wave, uh, left click and hold and draw as straight as I can. And there we are. And it looks obviously a little bit, you know, scribbly and not very clean. And the question is, how do you make that look better? Uh, the reason why it looks scribbly like that, if you were to right click on this, and have a look at how this line sequence is constructed, you can go to this Edit Points feature. And I'm going to left click on that. And you'll see what happened while I was drawing is every so often, presumably based on the speed of the mouse, it is dropping little breadcrumbs along the way, each one now represented as a black square. And you now have the option to go in and edit these. It drops them so frequently, I end up finding when I draw something in this way that I want to just eliminate a lot of them because it just creates unnecessary little bends and twists. One way you can fine tune it is you can go up to the view menu and you can zoom in. Let's zoom in 400%. There we are. And now you can see these black dots and I can right click on any one of them and I can right click and delete and I can right click and delete and you're going to simplify the overall line as you get rid of these. It seems a bit like a waste to have dropped all of these little points only to then delete them, but you can do that and that's sort of one method to sort of clean things up and then you, you know when you're done you can kind of move them around and say alright I want this point to be here and I'm going to eliminate these I want this point to be here, get rid of that one. And then also, in addition to the location of each point along the freeform line, there are these little white squares when you click on a point, and that will determine how that point is connected to the adjacent points. You can stretch these out, and it'll create more of a curve. You can change the direction. You can stretch this. And there are different ways that these points can be managed. If you right click on this, you can make it a smooth point, which makes those white things symmetrical. So if you move it like this or in and out, if you want it to be a sharp corner, then you just kind of put them right on top of the black point, and that creates a really sharp corner. Same down here. So that's the first uh, thing to note, is just how to draw uh, a straight line. Now. I'm going to get rid of this and show you a much easier way than having to go in and edit all of these dozens of points. Let me uh, click off that, click here, delete it, and let's go back to our home view. And instead of using the scribble function, let's use the curve line. So I'm going to left click on this, and I'm going to do the same thing. And you're going to initially think I'm crazy because it's going to look really weird with these bends, but we're going to clean it up really nicely. Click, click. Each one of these I'm clicking with the left click a separate time, and then I'm going to double click to end this. And you're going to say, well, that looks worse. But if I right click now on this and look at edit points, notice that there are many fewer dots uh, to deal with in the first place, and then you can move them around, etc. And if I wanted, for example, this to be a straight baseline, you can f make a line as a reference 
to kind of map against. So I'm going to make a straight line here and I'm going to click. And here's yet another trick. I'm going to hold the control button down. I'm sorry, the shift button down, which kind of locks this line in, in a horizontal. If I didn't hold shift down, then I can, this may not be exactly horizontal. It kind of snaps into place when I'm horizontal, so it's not too difficult to do that. Um, but if I were to hold the shift button down before I let go of the button, then it kind of locks it in place. If I go too far, it'll then put it in like the 45 degree view and I can go back to horizontal. So if you want to ensure that it's horizontal, the click and shift button is helpful. So I'm going to let go of the click and then let go of the shift and now I have a horizontal line and I can maybe use this as sort of a reference. So now I'm going to go back to my white object, right click on it, hit edit points and I'm going to put these points maybe right on this line, the ones that I want to be here. like that. Okay, maybe I'm going to get rid of this point. Right click, delete point. And now um, here's where we clean this up really nicely. So as I said before, each of these points has these trajectories associated with them. And I can make this a crisp corner. I can make this point directly at the adjacent point. And maybe move this up slightly. I'm going to make this a crisp corner by shrinking that bend. I'm going to make this a crisp corner here. Sorry for the traffic outside. I'm going to move this here. Oh, one other weird finicky thing about this is if you adjust an adjacent point, it may reapply. I'm sorry, I'm not using the right names. Those white trajectory squares, it may put them back out again. So you kind of have to go back and readjust adjacent points sometimes, as is about to happen here, actually. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to put these, put this like that. No, it left that OK. I'm going to go here. I'm going to make that a crisp corner. I am going to make these sort of symmetrical up. See, I moved it, so it's going to readjust the adjacent points and make this sort of look like a symmetrical curve. Bring this maybe in a little bit. And then here I'm going to make this a crisp corner. Oh, notice how these are different. I don't know why it did that. I'm going to right click on, on this and make it a smooth point so that those two line up all right. I'm going to put this back here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit more roundy at the top. Something like that. Almost done. I'm going to make this back to a nice corner again. And, you know, there we are. And let's get rid of this other line here. I'm going to hit delete. And then let's view and fit to window and go back out. So now we have, you know, a decent shape that we can use. You can make it bigger or smaller. Note that if I click on the object, I can horizontally compress or stretch it. I can vertically compress or stretch it. And if I go on the corner and I do this, notice that it actually doesn't preserve the aspect ratio automatically even though I'm clicking on the corner. If you want to preserve your aspect ratio, you can right click on the object. You can go to size and position, left click on that, and lock aspect ratio. Now when I click on the corner, Regardless if I go up or down, it's going to keep the perspective, the vertical horizontal ratio. And I find that useful to do that with most objects because I usually don't want to compress or stretch it in either direction. Or if I do, I can always do that with the side points. So after you went to all that trouble to draw your shape, you don't want to have to do that all over again. So you can duplicate this shape either by right clicking, you can copy it, and then you can right click and paste, or you could have hit Control V. I'm going to hit Control and down to kind of line that up. I'm going to hit Control V, and it's going to give me yet another one, and we'll put that over here. Um, another easy way to duplicate an object I've been taught is if you hover over an object, you hold the Control button down, 
and then left click on the object it'll replicate the object like that and you drag it over and then you let go and now you've replicated it you want to duplicate two objects you can hit control while one is highlighted already hit control and left click on another object and let go and now I can hit control again click on the com combination of two objects and drag it and now both of them are duplicated so once you make and spend the time to create an object if you're going to make additional use of it then you might as well just copy it if you want to make it larger or smaller or change colors obviously you can take any of these objects here you can uh, right click on it and you can format the shape that was the default menu that already had come up you say oh I want this to be yellow fine I'm gonna make it yellow you want it to be a broader line fine you can increase the width of the line and uh, that's the way I um, typically draw objects alright I think we'll end that here we will make these shorter videos and I'll go through additional tips and tricks in more videos to come